Here we are. We're about to enter the garage of the aimless. It's a beautiful space, y'all. Can't you see yourself here? Talking about all the shit that you're afraid to talk about everywhere else. I want my house to be a safe place for minorities, fuck ups, and failures. This is a piano that I've been doing a lot of work with. Um, let me show you guys what I've been doing because it's fucking brilliant. Where's your coffee yet? It's in there. Hold up, hold up. I'll be right back. I got my coffee, I got my cigarettes, and I got my set list for tonight. See, this is what they were fucking laughing at. The colors. Like, I'm eclectic, okay? Jesus. Why did you bring your weed down here? I don't know, man. I, I guess I just want it with me everywhere I go now. You better not take that shit to the grocery store. You're gonna, like, forget about it. You're gonna, like, be walking around with it in your fucking pocket, smelling like a fucking marijuana plant. Yeah. Just like a giant tree of the cannabis flower. You really should move to California, because if you move to California, then you could do comedy. You could like really pursue that a lot more hardcore. And you could probably work at a fucking dispensary. And a restaurant, you know? You just have like a bunch of jobs. Huh. You know, my friend Jesse Lavasser, if you're in Los Angeles, you should hire her to cook for you because she's awesome. Um, I know Jesse's going to be really disappointed that I'm smoking again, but just what we got to do, just what feels necessary right now. Smoking's just what's necessary right now, baby. <laughs> just what we have to do. It's these are the lies that I tell myself just so I can keep doing something horrible. Anyway. You look French, though. You really do. I do. I do look French. So, uh... There's this chick in the comedy scene, her name's Courtney Warner. She's really, really funny. You should check her out. She's like the only Asian bitch in the scene. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's, she's sweet though. I know that she's weirded out by me, but she, the, the reason I brought her up was because I just, uh, thought about the pixies. She made a joke. It was, it was really, really funny. It was about her Doc Martens. And she was saying that, she looks like she listens to the Pixies, but she doesn't. <laughs> like, well, I listen to the Pixies, <laughs> obviously. You yeah, see this? It's it's like totally like nicotine stained. <laughs> like this poster was originally white, and now it, it's brown. So, yeah, I'm sure if you keep smoking in here, like all these posters are gonna change colors. Oh, but this is this is fucking badass, man. Like, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I got I got, I got my, my, my my therapist couch. It's awesome. It does not have bed bugs. It doesn't, I promise. I know that I dragged it off the side of the road, but it does not have bed bugs. I don't have bed bugs. Okay? Calm down. There was this other couch that I dragged off the side of the road the first night that I did comedy therapy. And this cop that lived next next door to me, who doesn't anymore, see y'all crackheads can come on by now. Um, <laughs> he he and his wife just like watched me drag this couch off the side of the road. 
like just just dragging it just pulling this couch all the way back here into this garage and i was in a party dress by the way like a party dress that looked like like it would fit in around the time of like maybe 86 87 uh yeah they were horrified um yeah I, I brought this couch in here and brad edwards brad, sorry, the, my friend he's another comic he's really funny too he's like the dad of the comedy scene dad edwards says he gets called that but yeah he uh he was sitting on this couch and then he realized that like i actually did drag it off the side of the road that wasn't a joke <laughs> like my jokes are true they're just really really funny um yeah uh he he immediately got off of it <laughs> but, but the, i think that that couch was bad though it definitely smelled like cat piss and my friend tony Shout out to Tony and Heather, my favorite rednecks. They worked with me at Wendy's and I talked about them a lot. They were a lot of the time, like they were on, on morphine or Xanax or something. Like they were, they're drug addicts. And they came here one night and like hung out with me and I'm like, okay, so I eat like hot, half of a pot cookie, right? And I was like, I'm high, I'm really high. And they were like, oh, well, get higher with us, get higher with us. Like, both of them ate two at once, and they were on Xanax. Like, I don't understand. They're addicts, though. So it takes an addict, like, way more to get fucked up than it's going to take you, which is why you should not eat another cookie tonight, because you don't want to be in the same boat. I think it'd be very hard to be in the same boat as like somebody that's on Xanax all the time. You know, like if, if you are just like a weedy like me, then you know like the greatness of it. What were you gonna do? You were gonna do like a set list about you. Yeah, so I got through um I got through this whole page and then I got up to there so there's still all this all that and this <laughs> but it's funny because like when i timed it it was like five minutes yeah but then there was that like that card that they threw at you like this this is like the premise of the game basically don't you mind like it's really cool though it's really fun really great idea um uh, it's just comics put up like they're competing against each other. It's not, it doesn't feel competitive though. It was, it was really nice. Um, like everybody did well tonight. Um, I'm trying to think of like who was on, uh, the first person that went on, Courtney Warner, um, Josh Wagner, uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. This was it. Um, Fuck, what the fuck is his name? Like, Michael something? I feel bad because I don't remember this guy's name and he's so fucking funny. Oh my God. He reminds me of myself. He's just, he's totally out there. Um, he's got really crazy hair. Um, um, well, this really awesome guy in this team that, whose name I cannot recall at this particular moment for obvious reasons. Um, he, he did really well. <laughs> he's got crazy hair and he's hilarious. Uh, he talked about the Wizard of Oz tonight. I remember that. I love jokes about the Wizard of Oz because I, I love that movie so much. Do I know how much I love it? Look over here. You can follow me. Uh, let's let go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
picture that I got for like a dollar at the Goodwill. It's like the sweetest moment in The Wizard of Oz when like Dorothy like wipes the tear off of the Cowardly Lion's face. It's just beautiful. Um, but yeah, I, I think that that movie's about borderline personality disorder. <laughs> you think everything's about borderline personality, but uh, so many things are. So many things are, and I don't even think that they're like I, I feel like people are like way more fucked up. Like they are way more on this scale of mental illness with me than they realize. I mean, I'm not saying that y'all are on my level, but I'm saying that you have similar ideas. And you want to know why The Wizard of Oz is about borderline personality? You want to know? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. I'm going to tell you all about it. Okay. So Dorothy. This is the movie, by the way. You probably should read the books. <laughs> yeah, I should read the books. I'm sure the books are, like, fucking incredible. Dude, in the movie Girl Interrupted, that was about borderline personality. Um. And, uh, that one chick was, like, obsessed with Wizard of Oz. Like, it was her favorite movie, and she was, like, constantly reading the books. Oh, shit, somebody's outside. Hope they're not gonna rob me. I just... <laughs> Steak and Shake aprons. <laughs> Dude, I have a whole fucking box of Steak and Shake aprons, y'all. Come over here. Just want y'all to see it. That I don't need because uh, this camera got stolen. Dude, look at all those aprons. <laughs> A laptop does terrible camera work, okay? It's not me. See, if I made movies, like, I... My movies would be so fucking good. I just need money to do that shit. Money and motivation, right? <laughs> Another problem. Um, but yeah. I have a lot of aprons for steak and shit. Because, like, I thought that I got rid of all of them. Because I got rid of all my white t-shirts because they're, like, well, we had to wear, like, these long t-shirts. And, like, I was the shake bitch. So I was constantly covered in goop. So I threw all that shit away. But I still had, like, all these aprons that I just, like, kept in a box. And I was unaware of it, like, when I went back to work there. And I was like, yeah, I need more aprons. And so I accumulated even more than I already had. So I, I probably have something like 30 aprons in that box. So if you want to... If you want a black apron with pockets, I'm your gal. I'll just give it to you because I'm that nice. Um, and some gloves. But, uh, yeah. You were going to do a set list on shoes. No, 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 no. No, we were going to talk about borderline person. Fuck. Okay. So. Dorothy is dreamy. Like, the, the whole... The whole thing's a dream, right? I mean, that's what it's like to, to be a quiet borderline. But she, she feels victimized by, by Auntie M. And uh, Auntie M doesn't understand her. And, uh, fucking bitch down the street, uh, what's her name? You probably should watch the movie and then talk about it, rather than just, like, try to remember the things that you thought of, like, six months ago. All right. No, but this movie makes me cry so fucking hard, y'all. So hard. And it makes me laugh. It's really funny. Carly Lyon is hilarious. <laughs> but, so, like, all the characters that she meets in her dream, um, like, uh, the scarecrow, you know, all he wants is a brain. And... Uh, the uh, uh, Tin Man, all he wants is a heart, and the Cowardly Lion, all he wants is courage. Courage. I just love that shit. Um, but, like, the Cowardly Lion, like, 
that is like the magic key in the like borderline personality right there. Like, you know, he's just walking around, like talking a big talk, and you know, he, he's a fucking bag puss, you know, <laughs> just terrified of everything. But anyway, yeah, like, like all the characters want something that they already have, you know, like Dorothy wants to be home, but all she had to do was click her heels, right? And it's like that, like, man, it's like, that's exactly how it feels. You know, I can do it. I can try to click my heels. I'm doing this weird, like, David Byrne, like, move. <laughs> but yeah, dude, like, they all want what they already have. And, like, the fucking wizard is a lie, you know? Like, he's God or whatever, but he's just a man behind a curtain. Like, it is, that is one of the most symbolic films ever. Uh... But yeah, uh, and I always like think about like borderline, like the classic borderlines are like, um, the Wicked Witch from the West and <laughs> all it takes is water to melt their ass. Like, that's it, you know, like they're just a big talk. That's all they are. Lightning cunt, or no, no, thunder cunt. Thundercut, uh, the, um, Wicked Witch from the West, Lightning Cut, Quiet Borderline, Linda, yeah? She's just there to expose the truth. <laughs> and she's got those, like, lightning powers, though, like, she just fucking appears. Like, dude, I, it is, it, that, that is such a Borderline movie. I'll give y'all a list. Movies that probably are about this illness. It's good though, it's like a it's awesome insight into the way that people really are. You know, that's what I'm realizing about it, that borderline, maybe it's not just called borderline because it's on the cusp of psychosis, but maybe it really is like the borderline of like society and like, I, I don't know where I'm going with it. saying that it's it's more understood than like people are, are more this way than they want to be yeah yeah i can teach y'all so much fuck my vagina itches don't you hate that that's the worst like dudes just scratch their balls like in public and so i'm just i'm doing it now i don't care anymore don't care it's like what i was going into earlier about how like you know i used to hold in my farts you know, plug my ear holes when I was taking a shit in a public restroom. Like, that's crazy that I did that. <laughs> you know, the, the lies that we tell ourselves, it's hot in here, it falls into the toilet. Now we heard it. Oh, shit, I almost, like, tossed that pack of cigarettes, like, directly into my cup of coffee. That would have been a lot funnier if you did. Okay. Well. You waited almost 20 minutes for it, y'all. Appreciate it. Shoes, 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 shoes. You can tell a lot about somebody based on their shoes. It's a very quick and easy way to judge a person's character and life decisions. I went the existentialism route with this. What do shoes really mean? I'll tell you this, if you're homeless, then you appreciate shoes way more than some bitch who owns 500 pairs. Take that, Perry Hilton. Women accumulate so many shoes, it's ridiculous. Do we think that we'll develop a personality that way? Is that it? Dude, I have 16 pairs of Chuck Taylors. I can only assume this is why. 
but hey, I got a lot of personality, so maybe it'll work, eh? I, I, Chuck Taylors, those are the only shoes that you scuff up on purpose. The dirtier they are, the cooler you are. Whoever has the filthiest Chuck gets the most hipster crab, plus a doggy bowl full of PBR. these checks for 15 years. Hashtag starting artist forever. You ain't a starting artist. It's not parliaments. The five bucks a pack. You only do it so you can call them P-Fogs. You know, they taste like ass, so I don't know. You might be into that. No judgment. Women, though. We got way too many shoes. We do. I figured it out, though. Women hoard shoes. Because we want a shoe for every occasion that we imagine could possibly happen. What if I get invited to a neo-Nazi party and I'm looking to infiltrate and destroy? That's the only reason I bought the swastika boots, okay? They were really cute and they were totally on sale. If you wear heels, you're an obvious cunt. Why you gotta be towering above the rest of us with that clickety clack of arrogance? It is convenient though, cause I always know when a cunt's coming around the corner. Flats are for the down to earth girl next door who likes to listen to Bon Iver and just weep. You know that bitch washes Gilmore girls? Boots are what you wear when you're trying to assert yourself. Case in point. Beautiful. So beautiful. I'm gonna make a statement today. I'll let you guys in on a little secret. Lips are what I wear when I pretend to be a real girl. It's been too long since my pussy has collided with a cock. I'm gonna fool all the boys into thinking that I'm just quirky. The guys don't do this shit. They don't use fashion as a manipulation tactic. You know, even gay men don't do what we do. Guys have three pairs of shoes at the most. Wait, you got your tennis shoes, your Nikes? When you go running, just do it. You know, working out, sticking out them pecs. Just do it. That ought to be on the wall of every opium den. Maybe you got Skechers. Really? That's all it is? Y'all need to have more faith in your product. Maybe you're a good-for-nothing gutter punk. Then replace tennis shoes with Vans. Y'all got your dress shoes for weddings and shit? Dance recitals? Whatever y'all do that's fancy? And you got one of these three. Crocs, flip-flops, or Birkenstocks. You probably wear those Life is Good t-shirts, drive a Jeep, Blair and Dave Matthews, drink your weight in Dr. Pepper. I know you. Well, what do you say? Duh. Y'all remember moon shoes? Where are my 90s kids? For those of you youngins, you little babish. Moon shoes were those magical bouncy shoes that gave off the impression that you too could be Neil Armstrong. It's okay, kids. He was also pretending. The knockoff version was the regular ass earth shoes. Do I have time for a personal story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, ahead, go for it. Yeah. Yeah, you're funny. Yeah, keep going. You're funny. All right, thanks. Okay. So. This one night, I lost a shoe. I went on a year-long bender where I was essentially in and out of a blackout. I lost a lot of shit in 2010, mainly jobs and friendships and places to live. But this one night, I got tossed out of club play by two bouncers. When they found me, I don't remember this, I was wandering up and down Church Street, urinating all over myself, in a mermaid costume. 
It was Halloween, okay? I hadn't just accepted that I was always swimming in a sea of shitty vodka. But somewhere along the way, I lost a shoe. And I'll never know what happened to it. That motivated me to sober up, y'all. It was a good fucking shoe! Just kidding. I drank for like six more months after that. Shoes aren't that important. Told y'all. I'm not a real girl. And sing. <laughs> This is like, I ended up writing these notes down as well as to like what I was going to talk about in case I had more time, which is funny. Um, it's amusing that I, I'm always worried about that. Well, I mean, sometimes it can go one of two ways. It's like you either have too much time or not enough time. You know, you just, you should never like leave early though because you always have to do your time. Like, even if you're just up there, like, looking at shit, I mean, fuck, that's still amusing to people. <laughs> I mean, you got up there were just weird for, like, the first 10 seconds, people thought that was hilarious. I mean, stupid. Fucking stupid. These are the notes I wrote down, though. Velcro. <laughs> well, as I was thinking about, like, Velcro shoes. <laughs> well, Velcro is just awesome. One of, one of, like, the greatest inventions in the 80s. Um, but, uh, oh, man, like, I, I like slip-on shoes. I like lazy shoes. You know, like, I do like flip-flops a lot. Um, see, I wrote that. Lazy. Slip-ons. Flip-flops. <laughs> Jesus wore flip-flops. What does that say? He did die on a cross, though, so I, I feel like hearing that. And that right to be all laid back, you know, before he died in a horrific way after he was tortured. Um, yeah. <laughs> all for us, you guys. All for us. All for that eternal life. Um, but, uh, Okay, see, this was an interesting thing that I should have talked about. Well, I, I mean, I don't regret, like, any, it was great tonight. Um, but it was a show show, you know, it wasn't just like, like I said, it wasn't just some lame-ass open mic. <laughs> I feel like with the East Room, like, if, if it, if you do well over there, um, it's pretty rewarding, you know, like, you just get that, ooh, you know, like, like, you know, it, it, I feel like it's the stage, like just being on a stage. Um, but that's also what's so scary about it, too. Uh, uh, what I what I want to talk about. Because uh, there's so many directions that you can go with with different topics, you know, and I feel like I went in a lot of different directions, which is cool, like. Um, I'm just realizing, like, my capabilities as a comedic writer. Um, but, like, what about those people with, like, foot fetishes? I feel like summer has got to be either the best or the worst time for them. You know, like, because if you think about it, like, all the women that wear, like, flip-flops and sandals and heels, like, during the summertime, like, I mean, even in the wintertime, they do that shit just because they hate themselves, but... Um, <laughs> they just want to be fashionable, even though they're really uncomfortable. Um, I don't understand that shit. Like, I'm all about comfort. Like, I'm already uncomfortable enough as it is. I don't, you know, uh, need to, like, be, like, awkwardly walking everywhere because I insist on looking hot. Like, I just, <laughs> I mean, I cannot walk in heels. No way. I used to be able to. I used to be able to walk in platforms. Like, I love platforms, y'all. I was obsessed with Spice Girls. Kiss my ass. Uh, dude, that was, that was another thing you could say. Yeah, see, this just inspired me to, like, go a different route with comedy, not just look to offend people. I mean, I feel like my comedy is already offensive anyway, just because I'm so fucking harsh with the way that I see society. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter what I'm talking about. It's going to get dark at some point. Um, but I feel like that's what makes me, um, passionate or... 
I, I, I was going to say enjoyable to watch, but that's not true at all. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's gotta be rough. Like, like, so if you have a foot fetish, like, um, and it's summertime, like, what do you do? Do you just like stay inside because like you're gonna get an erection every time? See, this is what I don't understand about men. Like, men talk about sex all the time. They talk about their penises all the time, and. I think that they're lying because like for as much as they say that they think about sex like your penis should be constantly erect for how often you you bring up the subject like <laughs> and like i mean my panties are wet like throughout the day like I, i'm you know doing things all day um you know fixing drinks and taking orders and dropping fries and doing his job, doing her job, and, you know, running around, and running around some more, and scrambling, because there aren't enough people. Um, welcome to a restaurant! Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, I, I have this love porno, which is, uh, the, uh, pornographic segment of my brain that, um, just repeatedly fantasizes about being loved and fucked unconditionally um and unconventionally <laughs> so there's that you know um and so i've got that going on in my head just like a mobius strip so it's like uh, uh, uh. two small chocolate frosties you need a small fry uh Okay, come to that first window, please. Thank you. That's not how I sound. Um, I'm fucking funny, y'all. Like, there's no reason why I, you know, shouldn't have my own special, you know? All I'm saying, <laughs> take notice. See, I make myself laugh, though, and that's the most important thing. So, like, even if you guys don't take notice, that's fine. I'm still taking notice, baby. <laughs> cool thing about being, like, your own best friend, you know, because I was my own worst enemy for so long. So, you know, it had to go the other way at some point, y'all. You got to earn your narcissism. Where's my thing at? This baby. Next up.